Okay, okay, week 19. I got it, I got it. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, Whew, that was a tough conference, but I think we figured this one out. So this week, week 19, we're gonna discuss sound energy, one of my favorites. I don't know if a lot of you know this, but I actually was in touring bands for like 15-ish years, and uh, yeah, I play the bass guitar, and it's really fun, and most of my life has been based around sound. So, sound energy. Where do we use sound energy? Well, we use it all the time. We use it to communicate with each other. Hello? Hi. See? that We, we need it to talk back and forth and to get information back and forth. When we watch movies, ah! How if we mute your TV, see what a movie looks like whenever you can't hear what's going on? Like these people running here, are they running away from a giant squid or is it just going like, hi everybody, wanna come play with me? And they're like, yeah, come on over, let's go play over here. You won't know, but with sound, you can hear what's happening. And of course, my old profession, bass. You can have a guitar, you can play music, there's drums, there's keyboards, there's the theremin, if you remember that. We were affecting the electromagnetic frequencies of it and it was causing sound to go through the speaker and we could hear that and we could change and manipulate that and that's sound energy trans transferring information from one location to another. But how does that energy actually move from one location to another? Well, what is sound? Sound is pressure. It's a pressure wave, much like the wave on a beach, that vibrates matter. Now, we always think about sound going through a gas, like the air or something like that, but actually it moves better through a medium that's more solid. It can't go as far because the energy gets dissipated by that dense energy, but if you like clap on your hand and you listen in the air, but then you put your ear to a table and you clap on the table, you'll notice the volume is a lot louder. It doesn't go as far, but you get more of that energy transferring through. So. When we look at matter, if there's no sound and everything is perfectly quiet and still and there's no wind, everything's just nice and chill, what you'll get is you'll see the matter is just nice and at rest, no sound. The second sound is introduced, you get these compressed uh, uh, molecules that just compress down and have space and then compress and then space. And if some of you remember what this was, it's the body of the dragons that we made uh-huh, for Lunar New Year. This is a really good representation of what happens. So when the molecules are really close together, like this, that's putting a lot of pressure and there's little hairs inside of our ears and they feel this pressure hitting it and it's like, whoa! And they start vibrating around and sending signals to our brain that tell us that there is a sound happening. And then as it spreads out, Oh, there's less molecules, there's less effect on it, so those little hairs, they're not getting vibrated as much, and sometimes we might not even hear what's happening. And then as it goes through, it compresses again, and it gets loud and more volume so we can hear it. And then it spreads out, and then compresses again, really loud, and then gets really, really quiet, and then really loud, and then really quiet, and then really loud, and that's how we end up with that wave that you'll see. So loud has got a lot of stuff happening on it. Quiet, very nice and spread out. So it's like, ah, ah, ah. So that's how sound is transferring through the air or through any sort of matter. But how do we get the particular sounds? Like how do I make a word where it all sounds different? Because if it's just air compressing around my head doing this all the time, how do we know what the different parts are? That comes down to the really important part of sound energy, and that's frequency. So frequency is simply how often a thing happens. Um, like the frequency of how often do you go to school? Five days a week, that's the frequency. You go to school every day except for weekends. Another frequency you could think about is how often do we have art? How often does Miss Amelia visit us? Once every two weeks. Her frequency is once every two weeks. So sound has something very similar, and you can break it into two different categories. Really high frequency, which means that it happens a whole bunch. It's all a whole bunch of frequency going on. It just happens a lot. Now high frequency sounds, they're really moving fast and they vibrate our ears really fast and our brain thinks of that as going no, really high pitch. Wow, that was loud. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Kim, I forgot. I am very loud sometimes. Now, 
Low frequency happens much slower. Low frequency is going to be like, so what items make high frequencies? Well, I have this little bell here. Much more satisfying than my loud voice kicking through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or low sounds like very low, much more bassy. Another way you can you can practice this is like I just did, use your voice. So if you want to make a high sound like you can feel you're, you're straining your vocal cords and they're really tight. But when they vibrate, they vibrate really fast. So you're holding your vocal cords really tight, so it does that. But when you want to talk... And you want to make your voice a little more bassy, <laughs> you want to relax your throat, and it loosens up your vocal cords so they have a lot more flexibility and they kind of move around. Why are you giggling, Miss Kim? Am I sounding <laughs> like John Wayne? <laughs> uh, and then... Now, this is just a thing that's not so much about sound energy, but it's about us as humans. Now, I know we've heard of dog whistles sometimes where they go really high frequency and animals can hear those high frequency sounds, but we can't hear them. Well, there's an interesting thing that happens to people as we get older. We, those hairs, they get damaged or they just sort of like stop working. Over time, they get like bent and just from hearing everything and it's a normal part of growing up. But it's also kind of a fun thing to listen to at home or in class with your teachers to kind of see about if they fit within a certain age range. Because when you're first born as a baby, you have the most hair on your entire body that you're ever gonna have, and that also includes inside your ears. And now those hairs are really sensitive, and they can hear 20,000 hertz. Now the word hertz is just how often one of these little frequency waves occurs. So 20,000 of those frequencies, very high, we can't hear them, you definitely can't hear it either. As we get a little older, I think about six months to a year old, those early ear, like ear hairs, they kind of go away and they kind of get damaged and they, they're done. We're done with those. And then we can hear in this range here from everything from about 17,400 hertz all the way down to I think 60, 70 hertz, which sounds super low. Like you can barely hear it. It's more of an irritation, it's so low. But You'll notice when you hit about 18 years old, about between 18 and 40, that's where your hearing gets down to about 15,000 hertz. Now, you'll notice from the time you're born, at 20,000, that's a 5,000 hertz. That's a huge amount. If you know, you remember your fractions, that's a quarter of the amount that you can actually hear for your hearing range. But it's also interesting because that means that if you're under 18, you can hear stuff that people between the 18, ages of 18 and 40 can't hear. That's your parents. That's some of us here at school. We can't hear things that you get to hear. Um, and so as gets, when teachers give directions, the students should be able to hear them. Uh, yes, Miss Kim, because <laughs> if we can hear it, they definitely can hear it. <laughs> and then when you get a little over 40, between 40 and 50, you lose just a little bit more of that hearing. Just some of those hairs, they just, they've been working their whole life and they're like, oh, they're just tired and it's time for them to go. And so they decide that they're going to start bending and start losing those senses as we start to refine what we can hear and what we listen to and really focus in on. And then when you're over 50, you're hearing about 8,000 hertz. Um, and it's a much different from a baby that starts at 20,000. You've lost over half your ability to hear those really high frequency sounds. So there's some websites out there you can go to and you can hit play and you can hear those sounds and sit around with your family and your brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and parents or whoever you have at your home and listen to it. And I'm going to point at a random spot. Whoa, right there. Check that website out right there, right there, a little higher, a little up there, like right there. Okay. <laughs> we'll check that website out and listen to it with some older people. Um, and see if they can hear some of the stuff you can hear. And you'll know because they'll be like, I don't hear anything. And you're like, ah, it's kind of hurting my head. It's really fun. And you can find out what age they are and where the range is that they, uh, that they can hear in. But now I want to show you my table real quick because I set this cool table up with some awesome instruments on it. Um, 
including the experiments we're going to do. And I got one thing to show you, which is called a cladney plate. Super awesome thing I'm really happy about. And you can actually see a sound wave happening. And the other is going to be our experiment, which also includes a social distancing conversation. So this is a really cool thing that um, we had a video for the last time we did this. Uh, and it's very fascinating. It's called a cladney plate. It allows you to see what actually happens when those vibrations are going out and you can hear the tones and you can see where the, the valleys and the rises, so the low and the, and the high of those frequencies are actually happening. You can see it right here. So this is just a steel plate that I have sand on top of. And over here, I have a frequency generator. And remember how we were talking about that frequency? Really fast, high pitch, really big, low. And right now it is set at 400 hertz. See the HZ? That is short for hertz. And I'm going to turn up the amplitude, which means I'm going to make it more loud overall. And so instead of being happening really fast this big, it's going to happen really fast this big. And we're going to see the effect that it has on this sand. All right, so. And it might get a little bit loud. So we'll see what happens, okay? Now, you can see the sand is starting to bounce around. And it's forming into a circle very similar to the plate. And as I get more, you can see it's really reacting. It's bouncing because this plate is vibrating. Oh, yeah. And there. Tip some of the sand off that way. Bring it down. Hope that wasn't too irritatingly loud. And now, this point, this screw here in the center is holding it to a device underneath which is vibrating the plate. And what you're seeing is these spots right here, that is where it's at its lowest. So the vibrations are big, big, and they go out like that. And these lines are forming in the pockets where that energy is at its lowest point before it starts moving up and then down and then up. So lots of sand, no sand. Lots of sand, no sand. And if this plate was bigger, you would see those circles going out just like that because the vibrations on that plate are vibrating like this and it's just putting itself in those little pockets. Cool device and um, hopefully you'll get to see one in person one day. Um, and if you're in class, you're definitely gonna see one in person. Um, and now we get to move over to the experiment that we're going to do, which me and Miss Kim just had a lot of fun with realizing exactly how loud it does get on your ear. So let's go over to our experiment table. Yeah. Okay. So this is a really cool experiment. And uh, I think a lot of people do it for like fun, but it's really interesting to think of how the sound energy is actually being used in order to do this. And it's simply cups and string. Cups string. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start by finding a piece of string. This is just a piece of twine, a piece of thread. It doesn't matter. Just so long as it's flexible enough that you can get a stretch of it. Now we're doing social distancing, so we don't want to get too close to people, but we want them to be able to hear us, but maybe we want to whisper to them, but we can't whisper in their ears. So I'm going to make this about six feet long. Now, fortunate thing for me is I happen to be around 6'6", six, six, so my wingspan is also about 6 feet. So if I stretch my wingspan out, <laughs> which you probably can't see, I can get to 6 feet wide. Now I'm going to take it, cut it at about 6 feet, and then cup. I want to try to find the center because remember with the cladney plate, as the sound goes in, it creates concentric circles and the more, the closer I am to the center, the more even the sound is and the, the better the, the, the sound energy distribution will be inside the cup to let me hear things at long distance. So I'm just gonna start by poking a little hole as close to the center as I think I am. I'm gonna kind of stretch it out a bit. Then I'm gonna use a pencil and kind of just do, 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 do. make a nice little hole there. Don't want it to be too big because now I'm gonna push my string through. Now this is a trial and error thing. Sometimes it goes easy, sometimes not so easy. But I'm gonna use my pencil lead to gently push it through the hole. 
Sorry, it might be kind of hard to see. And I'm just gonna feed it through simply like that. And then when I flip it over, what? Is it in there? Yes. I'm gonna grab it through. Now, some of you might have a bolt or a nut at home. I don't have any here, but it helps to hold it in place is really all it's doing is it's helping to hold it in place. But if you made your hole small enough, you might be able just to tie a simple knot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put two knots on top of each other, make it a little bit larger. And I got a nice big knot there. And now when I pull it through, it holds. Now you're not gonna yank it really hard, but it needs to hold to where the string can get tight. And there's a very, very important reason that it needs to hold and just be able to just pull on the bottom like that and hold. All right, okay, so me and Miss Kim are gonna show this experiment. Hi, Miss Kim. Hi. All right. <laughs> now, one of you is gonna put it to your ear and hold it over because it's a cup and you're gonna cup over the top of your ear. Now say something, Miss Kim. Hello. No, I don't really hear anything. Hello. Oh, I see why. So remember I said it needs to be able to pull a little bit tight? So you wanna make sure that your string is tight and you wanna make sure that it's facing in the direction that it's not bent like this, but that it's straight forward. And then, Hello. whoa, wow, that, that is surprisingly loud. So if it's loose like this, the string itself is too flopsy and our voices, it, it loses all of that vibration, all that compression energy is just kind of lost in the flop. But when it's really tight like this, and remember, you're not yanking it so tight that it's gonna rip it out of each other's hands, but it's stiffer and the vibrations can travel down this line so much easier. So now, me and Miss Kim can be six feet away from each other. And having a nice conversation. Wow, I, it that's very clear. It's very clear and it's very loud. And you can whisper and you can go, Wow, yes, I can hear the whisper too. You probably couldn't hear me whispering, but you totally can. And you can keep six feet away. So if you're at your desk and you want to have a conversation secretly, just have your friend have one. You're of... giving them ideas, Mr. Mendes. Whatever, they're good ideas. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we'll see you next week and have fun with your cups. Maybe move them through windows to your, uh, to your brother or sister's room and have conversations secretly and see what you can do. And have fun being loud and quiet. And loud and quiet. And loud, right? And we're done. Bye. Bye. <laughs>